Hi guys, it's Chris from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop and I have to tell you, I love learning new things to do with my serger each and every day. It always fascinates me that dependent upon the threads you use, the thread paths you take, and the settings that you have on it, uh, the possibilities are truly endless of all the fun that you can have on your serger. Let me show you an example of a new technique I recently learned. I was able to take a baby burp cloth and with two layers of flannel, take a look at this blanket stitching all the way across. Isn't that a great finished edge? I used a variegated thread on that and so that's why you see some of the light and dark coming through. But what a fun way to be able to finish off um, you know, a baby burpee, a baby blanket. You could do this with uh, flannel or polar fleece, um, felt. There's lots of different ways you can go about doing the blanket stitch on the serger. Now stick with me because the threading path is going to be a little bit different today than what we normally do. But this is why we take classes in the future, right? And my girlfriend's cool shop is ready and excited to be able to teach you all of the wonderful things that serger can do. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started on the two thread blanket stitch on your baby lock serger. The first thing I want to make sure to do is that I have one needle and that is going to be in the overlock position one. Next, on this particular threading, I'm going to engage my subsidiary looper, which is this little hook right here coming out from the upper looper. In order to do that, I'm going to simply pull back on itself and slide it up and over. And that little hook is going to go into the eye of the upper looper. With my needle in and my subsidiary looper engaged, it's now time to thread. Flip the switch where it goes from surging to threading, and then simply pull your hand wheel towards you until these lock into place. Next, I'm gonna place my 40 weight thread on the lower looper spool and bring it down into my tension disc. Here and click and come down. Place this into the lower looper port and push to thread the looper. This is going to be where it changes up a little bit. You'll notice that I have my thread in the overlock needle one position because yes, indeed, we are going to thread the overlock needle one. However, we're gonna go through a different threading path. So I have a beautiful 12 weight decorative thread on my spool pin. I bring it up to the number one position and this time, rather than going through the O1 needle path, I'm actually going to go into my upper looper path. Okay, so this is really important and this is where it gets a little different. So again, I'm going into my upper looper path. So let's hear it click. There we go. Bring it down and I'll put it in the upper looper port. And push to thread. Now remember how we engage the subsidiary looper? Well, you're not going to see the thread coming out of it because it's closed off, right? So this is where it gets really interesting. All I'm going to do is change my threading to surging so that I can see the ports and the thread coming through. And then with my tweezers, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see if we can get nice and close here so you can see. I'm going to go on this, the left-hand side of where you see the thread, and I'm just going to pull it up. You can see I'm pulling it up right here. And now I need to get to the needle path. In order to do that, I'm gonna bring my thread up to where the little guide path is. And then I'm ready to just go ahead and thread as I normally would for the needle 01 position. And there we go, all threaded. Now one more thing to note is that I did switch my needle to be a 9014 in order to accommodate for the larger size thread going through. With everything threaded now, I'm ready to go ahead and begin stitching. My stitch selector is at an A. 
My differential feed is at an in. Width is a 7.5 and my length is at a four. Now with my two pieces of flannel with wrong sides together, I'll simply just place those one on top of the other. And there's one other thing that's really important with this technique, and that is to take a strip of water soluble stabilizer to place on top. Sounds kind of interesting, right? You'll see here in a minute why this is important. Take a look at the way it looks now, but in just a minute, you're gonna see something completely different. Once this is stitched out, it's time to reveal what's underneath. By simply pulling back on my water-soluble stabilizer, you're gonna see that the blanket stitch is now being shown. Give it a little bit of wiggle, and you're gonna be able to pull out all of those stitches so they look nice, even, and beautiful. What a great looking finish. Once you're completely finished pulling out all of the stitches, simply take your scissors and cut close to the edge. Throw it in a bowl of cool water, and before you know it, it's all disappeared, and the beautiful finish has been revealed.